Hey guys, for today's video, I'm doing episode three of Wreck This Journal by Carrie Smith. If you haven't seen my other two videos on Wreck This Journal, you can watch that here. Let's just get started decorating today's pages. There's like hair in my eyes and I don't know how to make this stop. Okay, so here's the front of my Wreck This Journal. I'm flipping to the tongue painting page, eat some colorful candy, lick this page. My sister Alina actually already did this when she previously owned this book. She licked it. I find this really gross and I will not be licking the page. Instead, I will be drawing a person that is licking something. In this case, this girl will be licking a lollipop. If you're new here, I don't exactly follow the Reckless Journal prompts quite the way Carrie Smith may have intended them. I just loosely interpret them. I kind of just take a word from the prompt and then draw something about it usually. And I made use of that circle by also drawing a mouth with a lollipop. After finalizing my sketch, I took out my Micron fine liners and quickly outlined my sketch. After the sketch had been outlined, I then took my eraser and erased all of the pencil marks. And now we are ready for Alley Art Art Markers. A repetitive name, but actually I like the markers. They were like $30 on Amazon and that's a Posca paint pen. Get rid of that. Okay, story time. You're gonna see me put my left hand out to receive a kiwi of death. So to tell this story, it's gonna require some background information. So I am one of four kids. So my mom has four kids. She frequently will like mix up things about us. Totally not her fault. Totally comes with the territory of having four children. No blame on my mother. I love you, mom. Okay, so that's just the context. I'm 26 years old. And two years ago, I drank a pure mango smoothie. It was delicious but I ended up with a allergic reaction to it where I like my throat hurt. Like I felt like I had strep throat for like a week and we figured out that I'm allergic to mangoes. I called my mom and she's like, oh yeah, that was you. I, I forgot you were the one that was allergic to mangoes. I was just thinking maybe my mom just doesn't buy mangoes. Maybe she doesn't like it. Turns out she just knew one of her kids were allergic to it and just axed it out of the grocery store list. And that's why I had never tried it. Fast forward to the kiwi incident. My sister Alina goes, hey, I've never eaten a kiwi. And I go, me either. I've never eaten a kiwi. That's so weird. So Alina buys a kiwi and we go, let's try it. I try the kiwi. My throat immediately starts hurting really badly, just like the mango incident. And then I ask my mom and I say, mom, am I allergic to kiwis too? And she goes, oh my gosh, that was you. <laughs> Mystery solved, guys. I genuinely did not know you could even be allergic to something as random as a kiwi. I thought that that was not even possible, but apparently it is possible. So if your mom doesn't buy things often, it could be because you're slightly allergic to it. If I ever have more than three children, I have to write their allergies down on separate pieces of index cards and then give it to them when they're adults. Because I know myself, I am just like my mom. I will mix everything up and just be like, oh, it's one of you and no one knows. And then you have 26 year olds walking around that don't know what they're allergic to. Another reason this may have happened is because my sister Alina is severely allergic to nuts. So I feel like all the focus goes on that because everyone else's allergies to things are so minor that they just don't even matter. You know what I mean? Like Alina is the kind that she needs like an EpiPen to walk around with. She gets like hives from it being in the air. Like that one is so bad that by comparison, if your throat hurts when you eat a mango, people just go, ah, you're not even allergic. Anyway, that was all a roundabout way of saying that I am slightly allergic to kiwis, allegedly. And this is basically finished up. I'm adding the finishing touches, just adding my signature and some highlights. I also rewrote the prompt tongue painting on top so that I could remember what the purpose of this drawing was. And here is what the final thing turned out looking like. I'm actually very happy with the way this girl turned out. I think her space buns look really fun. I like her pink hair. I am really happy that I added that green mouth. I feel like it adds something and I like that I incorporated the circle. I kind of wish I made her eyes green. That's my only regret, but I do like this one. For this next page, it's the create a nonstop line and it gives you a starting location. So I took out my Prismacolor colored pencils and I kind of knew exactly what I wanted to do with this page from the moment I saw it. 
I know I've seen a lot of people with their notebooks do this kind of doodle. The way you draw this, it's basically like that game Snake. It's just one long line and you can make all different kinds of designs, squiggles and rectangles, whatever you want. The only rule is that the line can't overlap with itself. If you're looking for a new way to create doodles that are just mindless and very relaxing, this is definitely a surefire way to create something that looks cool every time. It kind of reminds me of a brain, but I kind of like it. I also kind of wish I used my fine liners because then it would have been darker, but I do like the way this turned out. Moving on to our next prompt, we have throw something, a pencil, a ball dipped in paint. So I decided to throw a marker and I quickly got bored of this and felt like it wasn't really doing anything. So I just decided to take out a whole new piece of paper and incorporate that target into my drawing. So you can see right here, I'm drawing a hand first and this is going to have a lot of perspective going on. So the hand is closer to the you as the, the viewer than the face is. And you can see this girl is holding something and concentrating pretty hard. She's actually holding a bow and arrow and the arrow will go into the target. I was having a lot of issues with the perspective with the hand versus the arm. So I just decided to cover that up with some hair. Is this a bit of a cop out? Yes. Do I care? I don't care what people say when we're together. Sorry, love, but I don't really care. One Direction said that. Yes, her hand is a little bit wonky and her it looks a little bit large compared to the rest of her, but that's kind of like the perspective of it, like her hand is closer to you. I don't know. Anyway, I outlined it in black, I erased, and now we're ready for some markers. I am seriously considering getting those skin tone Ohuhu markers because she looks so orange. It's fine. She looks like she just sat in a tanning booth for 11 years and came out looking like an orange. And then I also colored her hair this blonde color. I actually think the blonde hair looks very good with the tan skin. She looks like a surfer. She doesn't look like a bow and arrow ist ersh per what am I saying? What's the noun to describe someone that uses a bow and arrow? I know this. Oh my gosh, it's an archer that was so dumb. Ah, yes, an archer. She doesn't really look like an archer. She doesn't really look like a Katniss Everdeen type of deal. But you know what? She, she does archery. Okay, guys, and this is her target. Is she aiming in the complete opposite direction as the target? Yes. Yes. Yes, she is. But that's okay. Maybe there's another target behind this target that she is aiming for, okay? I took my fine liner and outlined it very loosely. I thought that made it look cool. Added some highlights and of course the numbers to the target. I also added the prompt back into the page and put in some white gel pen. And then I put it into the book and this is what the final thing turned out looking like. I am very 50-50 on this page because I really like her face and her hair, but her hand just looks like it's not attached to her body. It just doesn't look right. I still like it though. Up next, we have fill in this page with circles. My sister Alina did start it. And I have these circles that were actually gifted to me. They came in a scrapbooking kit. And man, these were a good gift. I mean, I do not scrapbook that often, to be completely honest with you, but I've always wanted to get into scrapbooking. But just the, the concept of having these plastic circles that you can use for stencils whenever you want. That alone is groundbreaking. So I finally broke out my circle stencils and created all these different circles. And then I took my markers and you can see I'm coloring them in with all different colors. I believe I used all of the colors of the rainbow. Red, Roy G, Biv, yes, yes. I have all of the colors of the rainbow and I'm coloring in these circles. Very psychedelic, colorful. On the outsides, I'm kind of making them darker. On the insides, they're lighter. And that is because I'm actually making these circles for a specific reason. Do, do you see it? Do you know what it is? No. It's a gumball machine. My idea is that you're inside a gumball machine and you're looking around at all of the gumballs. Or maybe it's what your vision is if your face were smushed up against the glass of a gumball machine. I like that better. Either way, I'm very happy with the way this one turned out. I like that it's very like shiny and it looks like yummy. It like makes you want to like eat it. And here are all four of the drawings that I did for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see my other Wreck This Journal videos, I do have them linked in the box on the bottom left, as well as my Create This Book videos. Watch those if you want. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week for another video. Bye.